Hi. I'm very happy to be here today because you know what? People make a lot of bad decisions. And as you've heard, I've been around the block a couple of times. And I have seen a lot of people make a really a lot of very bad decisions or bring me in after they've made bad decisions. And weirdly, the I swear, the number one thing that causes people to make bad decisions is bad metrics. So we're going to talk about this today. There we go. OK, what's a metric? A metric is a quantifiable measurement to figure out whether you're doing well or not at a particular thing, OK? Now, there are two fundamental types of metrics. There are goal metrics. Those measure if you're hitting your goals. So for example, if you wanted to make a lot of money, which I hear rumor people like to do, your metric might be, how much money am I making? Your program metrics are measuring whether you're doing the work that you should be doing. So for example, I would like to label all of this data. What percentage of this data is labeled? In this talk, I'm going to talk about goal metrics. I can talk about program metrics for a really long time. There's at least one TPM in here who has worked with me on this. She will tell you. But I have 15 minutes. So we're going to talk about goal metrics, but what we're specifically going to talk about is perverse metrics. Perverse metrics is a term that I use by analogy with perverse incentives. A perverse incentive is something that makes people do something that's not, not what it was anticipated and probably bad. A perverse metric is one that uh, doesn't tell you what you think it's telling you, and then you use that to make bad decisions. And the reason why I'm giving that talk here is because this is something that screws us up so badly in privacy and also in fields like security, trust and safety, all of these risk-based fields. And this is because we had adversaries, we have unknowns, we have small risks with critical impacts. And so while this will screw everybody up, all of our product friends, all of our infrastructure friends, it's really going to screw us up in privacy. So first, I'm going to make you really sad by talking about all the different kinds of metric perversity. If you have more kinds, please let me know. These are the ones I've collected. And then because uh, while telling people things they don't want to hear is, in fact, a core skill and core part of my job, I am going to tell you how to avoid it. And I did not bring the bad news hat today. First, we're going to talk about measuring effort, not result. People really want to tell you how hard they're working. This is especially true if you are the executive in the room. Let me tell you, people really want to tell you how hard they're working. However, I don't care. I mean, I kind of care. But, but, but uh, I care about the results that we're doing. Like, I can, we can go and spin around in circles, and, but I would really like to know whether we're actually solving the problem. So real example, at a um, <clears throat> large company that you've probably heard of, and some people from there are giggling, uh, a company-level goal, actual company-level goal was send N notifications this quarter for a staggeringly large value of N, OK? And you know what? If you ever work with me and you do something like this, I will hit the goal tomorrow, and I will melt your phone so you never do this again. Don't confuse activity for progress. They're just not the same thing. You got it? OK. Next one. Just because you can measure something does not mean it is important. People pay a huge amount of attention to metrics, and you should use that. Because if you don't, it will be bad. So real example, I took on a team, a couple of teams, and one of the big things that they did was privacy review. And this privacy review team was not getting along with the rest of the company super well. And one of the things that they were told is, hey, you are slowing down launches too much. You need to move faster. Um, so they wanted to go faster. They're like, OK, we're going to be responsive to this feedback. And it's very hard to measure what faster means in terms of a privacy review. So what they did was they measured the time to first response. So the first responses were very fast. They were just also of the form, hello. Thank you for filing a privacy review. We will get to your privacy review soon, and we value your privacy review. So when I took on this team, the, one of the first things we did was we literally stopped measuring this. We did not replace it with anything. And by the way, no one was judged for their job performance on, how, on this metric in any way. They just measured it. But everybody was so worried about it that they started doing weird things. So we stopped measuring it. People started stopped doing weird things. We fixed the other problems as well. But this literally just not measuring made the behavior better. 
You need to use metrics to direct your people's attention where you want it. Third one is using a gauge as a lever. Gauges indicate a system is working well, but they do that indirectly. And this is because it is often impossible to measure in practice without a gap. So for example, if I wanted to know this talk was going well, which I do, now what I would really like to know is get inside everybody's head meat and figure out like how you're feeling, whether this is entertaining, whether this is useful. However, that would be both creepy and illegal, so we're not gonna do that. But I have to use a proxy measure, I have to use a gauge. So for example, the surveys that people fill out at the end of the conference, fill out the survey at the end of the conference on behalf of the conference, um, I will just say that, but, uh, sorry. Um, also, I can use things like looking at your faces and seeing what you're doing and seeing how you're doing that and trying to figure it out. So a real example that comes up a bunch is connections and social networks. I've worked on a number of social networks this time. I'm not gonna tell you which one this is, but uh, what happens is when the product managers look at things, they go, oh, a successful social network has lots of connections between people. And then you're like, yes, that is the case. However, if you, not all connections are good, so you don't wanna just make the number of connections go up, right? Uh, people who, who become the main character on Twitter and then like everybody's connecting to them and it's bad, we use those connections for access controls. You don't want the wrong people in your access controls, that would go badly, or harassment. Um, there are a number of people who like to follow other people just to harass them because they need better hobbies, honestly, but it happens, right? So I worked with a team that had some product managers who decided that the correct thing to do was make that number go up and to the right. It got bad enough that I went to the VP of Eng and I went to the VP of, of, uh, of product management and I said, I am going to be ashamed of us if we launch this. And they didn't. They were like, wow, um, we haven't heard that from you before and uh, we will not be launching any of these features. But like, they broke, they were breaking the indicator and they were breaking the product. You, you need to be very careful not to use a gauge as a lever. Also, there are adversaries. And do you know what about adversaries? They are in fact adversarial. <laughs> so you get, you're getting your money's worth out of this talk, right? Okay, so one of the things about privacy in particular is that the adversaries, they're not necessarily adversaries, right? One of the things that's really tricky about our jobs is we're working with people who we like and we trust and they're our coworkers, but they may engage in behaviors that are a real problem. One of the places this shows up a huge amount is incident and vulnerability statistics. Unless you have some kind of magic scanner that takes into account things like can humans understand this, the, the way the product is changing, all of these things, your, your, your vulnerability and incident statistics are gonna be driven in large part by not just your automated scanners, but your employees, your coworkers, your ex, uh, friends outside who are reporting. And the easiest way to drive down your stats is not fix every potential incident that could be happening in even the ones you don't know about or get out of this riskier line of business. The easiest way to do this is not to go out of your way, to say, yeah, maybe that's not an incident, maybe I shouldn't report it. To say, I'm gonna work on this feature instead of going and digging into why this thing is, is so weird and why we're getting user complaints. Your metrics can only be as good as your data even if that data is manipulated. A small number times a big number is a useless number. <laughs> estimates are estimates. By definition, they have uncertainty. And many of the estimates that we use have so much uncertainty that they are in fact useless. But um, people don't, people want a number so badly they use them anyways. So for example, I get asked a lot, and let me tell you, you deal with boards, you're really gonna get asked a lot. Well, how much money are we risking by this? Uh, can we, this is, we need to trade this off against this business risk, right? Like we need to go figure this out. Well, so what happens if, what's the risk if we delay something? Well, okay, that's probability times the impact, right? Um, so the, what's the risk of the issue happening? We need to take into account all the protections, all the user behaviors, maybe some news story that runs that causes people to start using your product at a higher rate or change how they're using your product. And then you, know, you need to multiply that by the impact. 
taking into account the direct breakage, the indirect breakage, emergency fixes on other issues, upgrades, consultants, many lawyers, potentially regulatory issues, FTC consent decrees, I promise you they are expensive. Uh, the, uh, there are also downstream in, impacts of the FTC consent decrees, including things become illegal for your company that are not illegal for your competitors, and which can directly change your ability to uh, compete in an area. Oh, also, um, it turns out if your users or your customers are pissed off at you, this is bad for your business. Both of these things are incredibly uncertain. When you multiply them together, because of how math works, they are way more uncertain. And sometimes you can tell that because it's a teeny number that you can put on your credit card. And sometimes you can tell that because it's an enormous number and it's much bigger than the size of your company and sometimes that's right, but usually it's not. And sometimes, and this is the most dangerous thing, you end up with a number that looks reasonable. It's not any more reasonable. That's not how math works. But people look at it and they go, oh, it's kind of a reasonable number. Or maybe I've jiggered it until it looks reasonable. I'll make decisions based on that. Watch your uncertainty. He also didn't measure the black swans. Black swans are unanticipated events with major impact. And they show up more often and they have more impact than you think. There's a lot of studies on this, not just in the privacy security realm. And you are only measuring the things that you know to measure. And you're not measuring all of them, because if you did, your analytics system would be bigger than the rest of your system. Measuring black swans has all of the problems that we just talked about with unlikely impacts in general. But you're trying to measure things that you don't know about. So for example, um, an example of a black swan event might be Gamergate, the poor Five Guys restaurant. Uh, and if you haven't, don't know what Gamergate is, um, probably don't look it up, but it, it turns out there's a bunch of jerks on the internet and they got very upset about something that they claimed was about ethics and game journalism, but ended up uh, being really bad for the Five Guys Burger restaurant, okay? It doesn't make sense. Don't try and make it make sense. But like, they couldn't, they couldn't plan for this, for like people swatting people and saying, Five Guys Restaurant. Anyways, Rowhammer, hey, let's run some computation really fast and we're gonna make some bits flip over here. Like, that's not a thing that people were thinking about. So the thing about black swan events is that you don't know how wrong you are, but you know you're wrong. Okay, now this is the part where I get to put my good news hat on and I get to make you not sad about things. Okay, so there are a bunch of techniques that we can use to deal with the fact that we live in a world full of metric perversity and try and avoid it. The jerk genie. Uh, this originally had a much less polite name. Uh, this is an all-powerful, extremely literal genie. And they are going to make your metric dreams come true in the absolute worst way possible. So for example, I made a product. I would like to see a bunch of usage on that product. Tell me my usage statistics. And I would like them to go up. And the jerk genie says, no problem. You've been DDoSed. Your statistics just went through the roof. No problem. You need to think about how they are going to mess up every single one of your metrics. This, by the way, will cause you to do better things because you will start thinking about like, um, oh, what if I wanted to, like real example from my last job, the, the detection and response team was like, oh, we're gonna make five detection rules and I was like, do you care? And they were like, well, only, no. And I was like, great, that's a bad metric, right? And it, it turned out that when we fixed a bunch of these bad metrics, we could go through and take two projects that weren't prioritizing because they were using metrics like this, we could put them together, and we almost kicked like half the company off the VPN within a short period of time. Uh, like you can do better things. Second one, garden metrics. Sometimes you need to use a perverse metric. Very often that's using a gauge as a lever because it is impossible or too expensive to go and measure a thing you actually care about. So you set up a guard metric. So for example, uh, my, I would like a lot of traffic. On, I would like the usage on my product. That would be good. Okay, well, um, I'm gonna go take all of the bad traffic out of it. Okay, so that's my metric, good traffic. Well, how do I know if I'm actually doing that? So I go and use statistics and sample and I go and figure out um, manually whether some sample of the traffic is bad. And I can get some pretty good assurance that way that my metric actually is meaningful. Or um, there's a, another metric that people use a lot which is called time to satisfaction. You're like, okay, well, how long does it take somebody to finish a task? And sometimes you know that somebody's finished a task because they push the I'm done button at the bottom. And sometimes, uh, for example, in web search, you don't know. 
Like, you know, people are going to search for things and then they're going to stop searching. So you're going to measure how long they're on. Well, okay, cool, that's great. But you know what makes people leave your site really fast? Server errors. So you might want to check that your product quality is okay out of, uh, out of band and use that as a guard metric. Wrong metrics. They are worse than no metrics. And um, I'm going to fully give you permission as soon as somebody asks you to, to compute a metric that cannot be computed, to tell them it cannot be computed. You can, you can have them send me email and I will explain to them, okay? You need to not use metrics that don't exist. You need to check your level of uncertainty. And you need to remember that if your data can be manipulated, so can your metrics, right? I, I, I actually, I'm, I think I probably didn't get hired for a CISO job because I was like, I refuse to do these kind, uh, these, uh, some particular kinds of metrics because they tell you to do bad things. Probably just as well, we wouldn't have gotten along. We should also be opinionated. When somebody looks at your metric, what should that make them do? And don't tell me, oh, well, they're gonna know this. I want them to know this when they look at my thing. And this is, by the way, one of the biggest problems that I have with most dashboards. People build dashboards, especially people in privacy. You build, we all build dashboards and we're like, we want people to know what their data handling is like. We want them to know what their access control is like. We want them to know what, what their data deletion is like. You don't want them to know that. You know why? Because they have very little bandwidth and you want them to do things. If they just look at something and nothing happens, you don't care. I don't care, no one cares. So what you want is to show them something that, which makes them do something. When somebody looks at their vulnerability statistics, somebody should probably look at, the, at that, uh, that uh, statistic and go, oh no, I need to patch some things now. I'm gonna be over there patching, right? Like that's what you want. Um, and since I have a couple minutes, I'm gonna, I'm, I, will, I will point out there are, you also, don't like, one of the things that's a real problem about, oh I don't, because it's question time. But the thing that's bad, bad about dashboards is that um, you, um, people have to go look at them, go get a piece on the top of everybody's execution review and put their statistics there so they have to see them all the time. Okay, I will stop talking. Thank you very much. Go forth, build great things, build better things, measure them well. <laughs>